All right, guys, today we're going to talk about something a little different, and that's running. Now, for those of you who are about to click off because the word running gives you hives, I strongly recommend you think of this like a GPP video because it will be a lot easier for your lifter brain to digest it. For whatever reason, lifters are completely fine with GPP. They think it's awesome, but the second you talk about cardio or running, they get worked into a panic. Now I'm a week into my challenge. I'm doing two miles every day for 30 days, and I'm going to come in in the next six weeks or so with the final video that talks about how it affected my lifting and my physique and what it did to me mentally. And I'm going to chart all of the changes that occurred in that time. But because it's fresh in my mind and I'm procrastinating from the run I'm supposed to do right now, I thought I would stop what I'm doing and make a video about it. Now I've been running for quite a while. I ran for football in high school. I was one of the few kids that actually took the mile time seriously in PE. And I've ran off and on recreationally ever since. On top of being something I actually enjoy doing, I also feel like it's benefited me in a lot of other ways, and I'm gonna talk about those. So the first reason that I think running is essential is that being in shape is awesome. And this is something you're not really going to know until you get put in a position that requires a minimum amount of conditioning and you realize you don't have it. Most of us get into strength training because we romanticize the things that being strong can potentially give us. When I was younger, I thought being the strongest man in the world meant that you were basically Superman and you could do anything. But as I got older and got more experience, I quickly learned that being very, very strong and very, very deconditioned is almost worse than just not being in good shape at all. Muscle creates a huge energy demand and being really strong means you can actually gas yourself out quicker. So it's almost the worst of both worlds. But regardless of what you're trying to do, if you're trying to keep up with the pace that your gym partner moves at, if you're trying to last through a fight, if you're helping a buddy move, if you're in the middle of a midnight lovemaking session after a night of drinking mezcal margaritas, all of these things require a minimum amount of endurance and you could deadlift 5,000 pounds if you don't have the capacity to last through these activities, you're gonna get egg on your face. Remember, being in shape is important. Being strong without an endurance base leaves you pretty much useless and unable to do the things that being strong should allow you to do. This video is brought to you by Nespresso. Now, if you're like me, if you're a gym rat, you're probably a caffeine addict, whether it's rain energy drink, whether it's espresso, whether you're a maniac like Eric Bugenhagen and you're dry scooping instant coffee. But if you want to up your game and drink caffeine like a civilized member of the human race, I strongly recommend getting an espresso. I got it for my wife for Black Friday and I got it for her because I'm a really great husband, but also because it would get her off my back about the Quest 2 VR that I wanted to buy. We had a Keurig for five years. I thought it was great. It was fantastic. I did not know how wrong I was. Our Keurig used to take up to three minutes to make a cup of coffee. The Nespresso bangs it out in 30 seconds. The quality of the coffee is so much higher. Our entire house smells like a coffee bean distribution plant. It's creamy, it's aromatic, it's smooth. So I really like caffeine. I also like to enjoy the caffeine experience, which is why I like good coffee. So this actually improved my quality of life a bit. I was really excited about this. And guys, I'm supercharging my content production. So I'm getting through like five of these a day. So if you wanna up your coffee game, or if you're looking for a last minute gift for Secret Santa that's gonna knock their socks off, I strongly recommend the Nespresso. Second reason is that it's therapeutic. There's something about running that just puts you back into nature. It's like an easy way to remove yourself from these like sanitized white walled cubicles that we live in with the fake lighting. I think running on a treadmill is plenty therapeutic, but especially if you're outside, you're breathing the air, you're looking at the trees, you're interacting with your neighbors. And there's something about the rhythm of taking each step, of swinging your arms, of timing your breathing to the movement. It's very meditative and it's nice to be out and just be able to let your mind wander. And you'll be surprised at what kind of thoughts pop up, whether you're creatively blocked or whether you're trying to work through problems in life, you get a lot of clarity by going out and just letting yourself exist in this strenuous, but kind of repetitive and monotonous environment. It's just really great for your well-being. It's also a really easy way to hit the feel good button. After a 20 minute run, I know that I feel just amazing. My energy levels are higher. I'm not so wiped out like I am from like a really hard lower body workout session. I can actually like do things throughout the day and I'm more productive. I feel happier, I feel more aware. There's a satisfaction you take in having committed to doing something really hard and uncomfortable. So you can pat yourself on the back for that because that's a job well done. But on top of that, there's like this freebie endorphin rush that just makes you feel good. So it's a really good way to work through stuff. If you're going through hard times, you can do it just about anywhere. You don't have to plan a trip to the gym. You don't have to schedule it. If you wake up, go for a run. If you're bored in the middle of the day, go for a run. You got a couple hours before it's time to wind down and go to bed, 
go for a run. Whether you're trying to work through difficult mental stuff or you're just stuck in a rut, it's a really good fix for that. The third reason and most important is that it makes you a better lifter. And this is something that I didn't realize until I had been training long enough to know how much being out of shape hindered my lifting. The meme of cardio killing your gains has been around longer than the internet has. I remember hearing that in the 90s, that if you run a lot or you do a lot of cardio, it's bad for muscle growth. Now, that's true at the extreme. If you're an extremely muscular bodybuilder and you're trying to add even more mass, you're not really going to be able to do that if you're sacrificing a bunch of extra energy and attention to this other thing. Similarly, if you're doing crazy marathon sessions, if you're running 10 miles a day, that's going to put a dent in your ability to recover. It's gonna make it very hard to perform when you need to be strong. So at the extremes, that's true. But I'm not here advocating for 10 mile runs a day. I'm advocating for 20 to 30 minutes of continuous running and nobody ever lost gains. Nobody ever got out of shape for 30 minutes of activity. And once I started taking running seriously in conjunction with lifting, I found that my density was higher. I could move quicker. I could do more volume in a workout. I could work harder on the sets that I was supposed to take deep into the weeds. Overall, I just got more out of my workouts. If you're limited in a leg workout because you can't recover from your heart rate being high or from your breathing being out of control, it's an easy fix, but you just have to prioritize it. And like I said before, being in good shape allows you to do all of those things that being strong should allow you to do. And lastly, aesthetics. We're around the holidays. This is usually where I gain 15 or 20 pounds because I have a pie from Sprouts every night. I was actually dieting pretty hard up until a month ago in Prep for Worlds. I got down to 248, that was off 1800 calories a day and doing cardio twice a day. The second world came and went, I started eating like normal again. The first three days my weight shot up three pounds just from the glycogen retention and it stayed the same ever since. I've been eating out almost every night of the week. We, for the most part, eat whatever we feel like. I usually get dessert. I've gone through a few pumpkin pies and my weight has stayed stagnant because I'm still training and I'm running every single day. So it gives me this nice buffer where I don't have to walk a razor thin line with my calories. If you feel guilty because you ate a little bit more than you should, know that the easy fix is to just go out and move more. And 20 to 30 minutes of continuous running every day is a nice insurance policy against those extra calories you ate that maybe you weren't supposed to. So those are the big reasons why I like running and why I recommend you take it up as well. Now, if you're brand new to running, I recommend you do what novice lifters do, which is start with a very low baseline and just progress linearly. The easiest way is to get your foot in the water and to build good habits by making sure that it doesn't suck too much. So don't go out with the intention of killing yourself on day one because that's usually not sustainable. What you wanna do is get on your treadmill or get out on the street around your block and do a very light, very sustainable jog and try to maintain that for as long as you comfortably can until the fatigue becomes unsustainable. Some of you might be able to do that for five minutes or more. Some of you might get 20 seconds in and feel absolutely awful. There is no right amount of work. It's whatever you can tolerate. Don't get on your case just because you couldn't run very far. What you're going to do is just stop and walk at a normal pace and you're going to walk for as long as it takes for your heart rate and your breathing rate to come back down to normal and then you're going to start jogging again. So this is auto-regulated. It's very easy, very sustainable. You don't have to take it into the weeds and every time you run just try to make it a little farther before you stop. This is the easiest way to get into running. Now I recommend controlling for time. 20 to 30 minutes is a sweet spot. For some of you that might be a mile, for some of you that might be three miles. If you have a set path you like to do, it's okay to use that as your benchmark. Just make sure that your time to completion isn't way too long or way too short. And remember, you don't have to walk a tightrope with your progression. Those, there's no real excuse to skip a running session. All you have to do is just get out, get moving, and eventually you'll find that once your feet get moving, you end up kind of wanting to finish the whole thing. So let me know what your guys' experience is with running. Do you run? Do you hate running? Leave it in the comments section. I especially wanna hear from guys who started doing focused cardio and noticed some positive improvement in their training. If you got a story to tell, leave it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Till next time, this is Bromley. I'll see ya.